The Delore Factory is sponsored by Ladera, a romantic paradise. Lime, value every moment. Illuminous, your transformation begins here. Inside Out, everything for your home, inside and out. And supported by the Cultural Development Foundation, creativity, culture, community. We've all had our share of ups and downs. How we take care of problems show how strong we can be. Because if we can't, we'll simply fall apart. At the Ladera Resort in Sufra, St. Lucia, we talked to a woman St. Lucian people have seen many times, singing, laughing, and to the young in Sufra, she's known for being a disciplinarian and a teacher. But behind the broad smile of a truly talented woman is a person who knows the true meaning of blood, sweat, and tears. Stay with me on The Dolor Factor as we explain why Sawina Charles is a woman of undeniable courage and strength. I'm Dee Delor and welcome to The Delor Factor. I'm really excited about today's show. Why? Because you're going to find out life as a woman can be really exciting and rewarding. And you'll also find out why we also have to be the decision makers. Because if we're not, things just don't happen. Right. And to help me to tell you this message and show you why is Selwina Charles. I have seen Selwina when I was a little bitty girl. You mean I'm that old? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering whether you would have remembered me as being a little bitty girl because you too were very young at the time. Oh, okay. Because my mom is from Choiselle and we used to come by in my school holidays and so on. And I used to see you and didn't know who you were and who you would turn out to be. And you have turned out to be a woman not only of character, of integrity, of creativity, but someone that as soon as I start talking about women that we should acknowledge, your name always comes up. So I'm so proud and pleased that you're here uh, with me at the wonderful Ladera Resort, of course. Uh, you, you know Ladera well, very right? Very well, very well. Good. So thank you so much for being here with us. You're very welcome and thank you too. Um, actually, we have something in common because my mm. mom is from Shuzal also. My mom is from the village. Okay. <laughs> oh. So my relatives are practically on my mother's side. They're all from Shuzel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And my dad is the one who's from Sufre. Okay. But I spent my time growing up between Shuzel and Sufre. I would spend, well, school days during in Sufre. And all my vacations would be spent in Shuzel. Wow, yeah. that's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. But if someone had to describe you or ask you to describe you, how would you describe Selwina Charles? Well, um, I have found out that I'm just about getting to more, know more about myself as the days go on. Because um, at the first, I just looked at life very simply because there was nothing that I really considered wrong per se with life. I looked at everything as being on the bright side. I never saw the, the downs, I only saw the, the ups. So all in all, I'm a very happy person, but very, very quiet. Some people say that I am laid back, but I'm not. I just, I'm very cautious about the things I do, the places I go to, the people whom I get myself involved with. Um, but I prefer to be in a peaceful setting, a place where there's complete serenity. Mm -hmm. um, tell, tell us about your family in terms of, you know, where you grew up, your parents, any brothers and sisters? Well, there were quite a lot of us. My mom had 18 children. She had how many? <laughs> 18. <laughs> and I'm the fifth of the 18. Um, 18 children? Yes. 
well, she had 10 boys and she has three, 10 girls, three boys, and the others are all deceased. Yeah. Um, most of them died at birth and two of them died accidentally when they were very young. Um, myself, I have 10 of my own. I have five boys and five girls. <laughs> How do you do it? No, I should not answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely mm. amazing. Yes. And, um, well, they are the joy of my life. I can't, well, my development, my, everything depended on me being there for my children. Because although they have a father figure in their lives, somebody that they call daddy, I was basically the mom and the dad. Before you go into that, I yeah. want to just go back a little bit to, into your, your family, because you said there were so many of you. Were, were, were your parents together all that time? They were married. My mom got married to my dad when she was 13 years old, until they remained married until death. My dad died first, and the mom died later. Mama died later. 13 years old. Where? Yes, in Chazelle. <laughs> that yes. was possible. Yes, it was in very. Those days? That at, well, there was something which was very common the parental consent. As long as the parents agreed, they consented. And she was pretty well grown for her age. She was not. Actually, she was even considered to a tomboy and run errands between Chuzel and Labry for my mom on her own, for my grandmother on her own. And I think my father saw on one of these escapades and he decided that he would pursue her. I was told that he actually went to my uncle, Audi, and asked him to, at the time, there is something that we call make tags, or make tags, like get him to be you know, in a position where he can talk to my grandparents about my being with my mom. And my mama said that daddy always told her, um, Uncle Audie always told her, if you don't talk to him, um, you'll see what I'll do to you. You know, so he was the person who encouraged the union. Yeah. Okay, well, it explains <laughs> a lot why there's so many children. You had to start so young. <laughs> But it was, I didn't uh, think that that was, that was possible or happened in St. Lucia. I really didn't think so. It does, because I've known of couples who have had more than that. There is this particular lady at Palmis in Sufra. She has died. But she, when she reached on number 16, she stopped counting and there were others after. But <laughs> she, uh, <stopped> counting. <laughs> she actually has a, a, a son that they call the 16th in, in Creole, Lysez, mm -hmm. but in her case, she had a number of twins. Okay. Yes. That's just well, these amazing. people, I guess they had nothing much to do than, you know, to jump in bed and out of it. Well, I, 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 I think you'll I find do, one to I talk. I didn't do that. <laughs> because, I mean, <laughs> you're not far behind. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is said that um, there is no good love without good love. Yeah, good. Luck. Makes sense to me. Yes, it makes sense to me. But, um, but how? What? How did that help you in your development? Because there's so many of you. How do you? Doesn't didn't it get annoying to have so many people around you all the time? Well, that's an amazing question to be asking me because at, on the onset I never really looked at it. None of us really looked at it as being a bunch. We all grew up in a musical home first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Our dad played the saxophone and mama was always singing along because sh she sang in the Schuzel's Catholic choir. Mm -hmm. So the, it was a combination that he would play the saxophone and there would be a whole lot of harmonizing in the house because everybody sang, everybody sings. And um, we kind of grew up, unlike other families, we were not very wealthy. We were not too poor either cause, because we had um, people like our grandmother sending the fish and the turtle eggs and the things to us from Chozel. She owned uh, many fishing boats. Mm -hmm. And um, my mom was also a seamstress. My dad did a bit of cobbler, um, um, 
well, in, the, in these days, we call it shoemaking. Mm -hmm. He was also a barber, and he worked at a copper factory. So the income was coming from little, little places here and there. So um, they were able to get us not the very best, but we were never found like wanting to such an extent that mm -hmm. we would have to go and beg, no. Mm -hmm. um, well, let me ask you a, a question. Do you believe that wherever your parents are, they're looking down at you, they're, or they're always with you? There are times when, I wouldn't say looking down at me, but there are times when I'm faced with different issues. I kind of remember how my mom handled these things, and I try to emulate her, and it works. Because I remember very distinctly that my mom built the home that we lived in, we grew up in, on Boulevard Street. She built it single-handedly while my dad was in the Virgin Islands. She had us carrying river rocks, breaking the stones, carrying sand. And she was pregnant and pushing that trolley with all the cement and boards. I remember that. Mm -hmm. And she had two old men. She couldn't afford to pay them a salary to help her build, but she would cook foods. The foods don't ask me how we got it, but it was not legally. <laughs> Actually, there was, there was that, um, the whole Dubule plantation mm -hmm. where they had bananas. I think you better just yeah. stop it right there. <laughs> when we come back, we're going to yeah. hear a bit more about Solina and life. So stay with us.